You're listening to The Angry Designer, where we cut through the industry bull to help frustrated graphic designers survive and thrive. What's up, Angry Designers? So today we have a super crazy ass special treat for you. Today we have brought one of my longstanding heroes. And I know he's just kind of like you know, humming and hawing and rolling his eyes going like, yeah, hero, nothing or whatever. <laughs> but I mean, again, I've, I have followed this dude for a long time. His, his work I've been always so envious and jealous about. And, and, you know, he is doing something really cool in the next little while. Um, and again, that's what spurred up this whole conversation. So, you know, we started talking and you know what? perfect person for this show so i want to introduce alan peters Woo. right Woo. thanks right. man thanks for having me i appreciate it dude yeah. honestly no and again thanks, not, to, not to fangirl i told you like right from the start i mean I, i'm gonna have to keep myself down on this one right because <laughs> it's just your work is always so good but um, before we get in crazy about this okay let's yes. first talk about that story because we've already had uh, a great conversation up until here mm -hmm. sean and i cheers buddy oh oh, oh whoops whoops oh man i should have brought some <laughs> Well, that's okay. well I got, I got my busted iPad over here. <laughs> <laughs> I could drink the water out of it. You drink the water. <laughs> drink the water out of that. <laughs> well, it just came out. You of the got so machine. angry, you Bring busted an iPad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So first off, because again, that that sign behind you is legendary okay because i always see it i'm always so jealous of it it's just it's a fantastic piece um i want it for our office so when you're done with it send it over <laughs> here okay what's the story behind it so the story behind this sign um i got hit up by right way signs uh some good folks out of chicago i don't know if you follow them at all but they do amazing work and I huge do. I do. like uh giant murals and things like that they did a whole headquarters i think for jack daniels where they did like just beautiful lettering pieces and stuff like that on there and basically i, I could tell you a whole story about them but let's let's skip that um <laughs> uh they, they we throw out some, they said they needed a logo i i, I gave them up the price which wasn't that high it was just like it was like my lower end price and they're like uh how about we do a trade how about no we do way. half half money, half sign, and so uh, I was Dude, like, that that sounds awesome. And, you know, they, they, they figure like, hey, we can make some social media posts about this. We don't get to do a lot of like this style of signage, you know, because most people want you know like the plastic stuff that's backlit and and, and more expected things. And so it's it's uh, a way that they can flex their skills a little bit, and, you know, show off. <laughs> oh, you got to turn it on. You got to turn it on. I want to see it on. Oh yeah. I can leave it on for, for a minute. It makes a little ticking noise. So if that's annoying, I'll... Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, Is that awesome. ridiculous? That looks so Okay, cool. so I recommend anybody, you know, go visit our YouTube channel and check this thing out. Yeah. It is... Dude, every one of your Instagram posts should be on like this. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> yeah. So this sign here, um, uh, I, I design the thing. I lay it out. I, you know, I'm like, I want this channel lettering. I send them examples because, you know, like I have all... I, I love going and digging in antique stores and taking pictures of old signs and Some? stuff like that. So I'm like, I want this channel lettering with the with the neon running down the middle, and then I want this part, you know, you know, raised down. up about you know a quarter inch, mm -hmm. but not lit. But then this whole area would be lit. But I had all these like real. I laid this whole blueprint out, yeah. sent it to him, and then we went on a family vacation. And Maria, my wife and partner in the company, she's like. She's don't look at your phone when we're on vacation. Just kind of just like as little as possible. So anyways, I get this email from him saying like, hey, we have to make the sign slightly bigger because I designed it to be like, you know, two feet tall. Slightly just bigger. Like, nice little sign that would fit in my office, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we had to make it slightly bigger. They sent all the measurements in, uh, you know, like in centimeters. And I'm, I'm from America. I'm yeah. too stupid to like sit and, <laughs> yes. and, and, and do the math. I'm like, sweet, it's going to be bigger. Make it. <laughs> I, I didn't want to like. Say, I, I didn't want to be on my phone super long, so I'm just like, yes, yeah. approved. Do it. <laughs> and and and, and, and uh, later on, like later on that trip, I was like, I should really see how much bigger that is. The thing is, like, it's like five feet tall. This is like way behind me. If I stand up against this thing, oh my god, oh, man. look at that! Oh. So, like, oh my god, that's ridiculous. To carry that thing up the stairs is nuts, <laughs> man. You know. I, <laughs> <laughs> to reinforce or hanging it hanging it i need like it's another full-size man yeah <laughs> dude oh my god i love it even more now i yeah. mean again i just i just we do we, we need <laughs> we totally. yes wow oh, yeah that's great sweet sign neon signs are expensive 
But yeah. that said, I bet you could do something with them that wouldn't cost quite as much. And some, I, I kind of regret it a little bit. You know those old vintage signs that are done in the same style, but they have little light bulbs in there? Yes. Yep. I'm like, Absolutely. oh, I should have done a light bulb thing yeah. instead. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a little bit more carnival. But You know what? Yeah. Right now, neon is totally hot, like with that whole synth wave vibe, the 80s yeah. kicking in. Right now, yeah. it's, I think that's like a million dollar sign. I think, I think you're sitting yeah. on something that's gold. Yep. Jeez. Yeah. That's awesome. Just oh, got to wow. find another Peter's Design Company and I can sell it for a new time. <laughs> um, and Sean, we're going to go apply for that tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. oh. I'm changing my name. Changing the name. <laughs> that's my sign. I, I, that, that, that's, it's huge. Um, yeah. I was born in 80. In 1980. Oh, okay. And so my, my childhood that, you know, it's like the G.I. Joe, He-Man, Transformers, Voltron. Best era, in my opinion. Best era. Good one. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> You know what? If you want to feel nostalgic, just go and listen to that G.I. Joe entry song again, right? Like oh, yeah. the theme to G.I. Joe. And it's just like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just yeah. want to feel amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, geez, oh, and then mean, the Legos, too. You know, like, I had so many Legos growing up. Old, like, you know, like when they had, like, the space set and the castle system and stuff yeah. like that. I I still have. That's one thing that I kept from my childhood. Because I'm like, Legos Legos haven't changed, so it's timeless. Yes, absolutely. My my kids, when they got old enough, we um we found all the instruction booklets, and and I sat with them downstairs for like months, and we sorted everything out and made all the sets, and then oh, and then they just destroyed them and just of mixed course. them back up again. But it was actually it was fun, kind of relaxing going yeah. through and just looking for a specific piece out of like a million <laughs> pieces. I don't know why I I find that <laughs> enjoyable. It's I think it's the same thing I get from um. When I go to like an antique store and I'm looking for old badges and crests, it's oh, like dude. that um, that uh, little boost of not adrenaline, um, uh, that it's like endorphin hit that it's you get. Just the rush yeah, when you absolutely. when you find the thing you're looking for and you're just like, yeah. <laughs> like just a moment. What was that? Yeah. What was the best found? Best find you've ever had at an antique store or antiquing? And it's not um, antiquing. I understand. I, I wish there was a cooler word for it. <laughs> Design. I, well, I, I call it. I, 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 I call it a uh, badge hunting. I tell you all my stuff. Badge, badge hunting. hunting. Well, um, and that would explain for your badges. style. Okay, well, which is just, that it, first. It's a lame name um, because <laughs> uh, it, because <laughs> well, there, there was this one dude, Type Hunter, and he he I think he takes he just went by Type Hunter. Yeah, I, I still know him. He's a good dude. But I was it's like I was like, well, I'm, I'm looking for badges. I'm badge badge. Hunting. <laughs> and this is like years ago. This is back in like 2007 or something that I started doing that and, and taking that. I've been doing it for years. Honestly, I would like to write a book where they I get the budget to drive across the country and just go to antique stores oh, and make a whole that. book of that kind of stuff. Dude, that, that would be cool. That honestly. would be heaven for me. Just making it, I would be so happy. And we well, could, I, 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 my wife and I have talked about it. Like, we could put vinyls on the vehicle and we could write the whole thing off. And <laughs> that would be really neat. Well, and that's the benefit of what we do for a living. Because, I mean, you can, as long as you get, you know, give good old Elon a call and get like a satellite mount system on top of your, you know, your road vehicle. Right. You can take your work on the road, pull yeah. over, work work by night and hunt by day. Yeah. Except yes. you cannot call yourself a badge hunter. Okay. <laughs> because you can call it badge hunting. I just yes. don't want to be. Badge hunter yeah. is a little, um, it's, nah, it's a little bit crazy. <laughs> But with that being said, okay, so yes. I think, and I mean, I almost got into a fight with somebody on 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 one of your, um, like, it took everything behind me because I, I think I even called you. I, I think you you did a post a couple weeks ago, and you were like, you put all your badges out there. It just it was just phenomenal, and I was like, dude, like, you are literally the master of badges. Like, you 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 kill this space, and some guys like, well. Well, I don't know if I'd call him a master. And I mean, for a, literally a whole day, I was trying to get the right, like, how do I respond to this guy without insulting it? In the end, I didn't want to disrespect you by putting something nasty. But dude, it, it caused me so much anxiety when somebody was like, like, not agreeing with the fact that your badge skill, like, I mean, the stuff that you create is phenomenal. Mm. Like, it's, you have this style. You own this style, I yeah. think. Like, from the start, always? Or is this, like, how far back has this gone? My first job out of school, I remember my buddy Nick Smazel. I was working with him, we were, and uh, we lived, worked at this little studio called Initio. And he was working on a freelance project, like after hours there. So, like, and I always would just right out of school, I'd work late hours all the time, just because I you know they told you you should. Like in school, they're like, you know, make sure you know, like to get hired on for intern and all that to just work your ass off. Hmm. And so. I was doing that and you know, I didn't have kids or anything, so it wasn't that big deal, but yep. he was working on some freelance project and he was 
going to design some badges and he had a whole bunch of books out like uh, design books that he brought in from his house awesome. and he was looking up old like charles spencer anderson badges and, and crests and stuff like that by and at that I mean, this was a time before like badges kind of came back or were in style again you know, you'd see them every so often like there would be a couple companies that would do them but it wasn't like it wasn't like it is now where it's more commonplace and almost like back in i, I feel like it's back in like you wouldn't be blown away if you saw like a big brand come up with a, a new logo and it had you a badge bet. in the system. You just be Fair. like, yeah, that's that's fine. <laughs> um, but I remember seeing that and looking at that, and and it, it kind of sparks up in my head. I'm like, oh, that, that's kind of cool. That's kind of interesting. And and I didn't get into it at that point at all. I just I remember seeing it, and I'd, I'd see a couple people doing it here and there, and you'd start to see it on like rock posters and stuff like that. There's yep. a, there's a agency out of minneapolis called aesthetic apparatus mm -hmm. and they're they're legendary they do uh tons of band posters and they've been doing it for years and nice like they'll be like i remember one year they basically were like oh let's just submit a bunch of our posters to uh communication arts and i think they gave them a full spread or two of okay. just posters and like every single one of them got in they just <laughs> i've awesome. never seen that in ca and like the design annual is like damn <laughs> those guys did it right um that said it, it, you know they'd be they were digging through antique stores they were digging for old stuff and and even csa charles spencer anderson i had lunch with him when i worked at target and I he was saying like you know how you go looking for antiques and stuff like that he's like i've been doing that shit for like 30 years kid <laughs> <laughs> just to throw in the kid part yeah. of course i don't know if he said it quite like that oh, yeah. he, he's a nice dude he, very yeah, kind yeah, yeah, very yeah. polite I I, I I that's just me Trying to make, the, make the, the the a little more humorous, but he, he, he's a nice guy. But yeah, he, he was like, "Yeah, I've been doing that for years. That's that's what I do for a living, basically." Yeah, that's awesome. Um, but you know, you, you'd see that stuff, and um, it, it wasn't until probably around like two thousand six or seven or something like that. I was working at an ad agency called BBDO, yep. and I started getting some opportunities to do work of that style i remember i was like doing i was branding an event that was for hormel bacon it was like this bacon event like a baking competition i was like oh that's kind of badass actually um <laughs> wait I like bacon. Bacon cool. or baking ba bacon like bacon. bacon like all sorts of interesting like, like swine yeah. yes oh, yes like mm. delicious bacon like mm. bacon. <laughs> yeah. a bacon competition i'm like pies or, or yeah, bacon or pig yeah. and so it was like it was called the bacon takedown and it was a competition <laughs> where, where these folks would like uh, make awesome recipes with bacon and compete, you know, a big old festival. And so I, I just did like basically rock posters for that in essence, you know, mm. just these bacon themed, like awesome posters and, and did it all with like crests and badges and like a vintage feel and fun so illustrations cool. nice. and like won a ton of awards and got a lot of recognition. And it was the first time I was like, oh. Oh, people like this, and I really like making it. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do more of this. Yeah, <laughs> and, cool. You know, it had that balance. You know, the, the 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 can it win awards? Yes. Is it making somebody money so they're willing to pay for it? Yes. yes. And do I love doing it? Yes. It hits all those things. Checks and all the boxes. you know, how it is. You, you, yeah. The whole point of this career is just to find something that you love doing it, and then just make money doing it, and and keep doing it yep. as much as you can until people stop paying you for doing it because it's so fun it's so true though right it's like the money is just the 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 outcome it's like the necessary evil yeah but the fact that you're doing something that you love on a daily basis i mean we, we profess this all the time i yeah. mean we we're it's like we're rock stars we're not we're not doing this necessarily for the cash because if you're doing it for the cash maybe not the right industry for everybody but yeah. if you're looking for just the fulfillment for yourself and just a creative journey and it just you know, like it so it doesn't actually feel like a job. I mean, this is it. So good on you for that. Yeah. Has it has it ever okay, so here's a question. So you've definitely got a unique look. Has it ever lost you a job because you are so you have a unique look? Having a unique look is a good thing because mm -hmm. uh, if here it's not a good thing if you're working at an agency because they're coming in there, they're buying the agency style and they're like, I like this, I want more stuff like this. And so if you have a different style than they have they're gonna be like, well, what what is this that you're showing me? This isn't what I basically I, I bought that, and now you're giving me this, mm -hmm. and I might like this still, but it's not what I not what I was expecting. Where with me, my portfolio is filled with the kind of work I want to do, cool. and so cool. when people hire me, that's 
they know what they're gonna get and they're expecting that and they get excited when they see it and I'm like, awesome, I'll just keep doing it. It's like Jessica Hish. You go hire Jessica Hish, you know yeah, exactly yeah, what you're gonna get. Exactly. Yeah. And and that's that's awesome because she can really focus and hone that style and get really, really good at it. Yeah. And and just continually get better in in a focus niche rather than spreading it wide. Yeah. I think the only thing with having a specific style is making sure that it's broad enough that you can still stay creative, that you can still have fun with it. And uh, I found like doing passion projects and yep. things like that, mm -hmm. that aren't for clients. It lets you flex your skills a little bit and Absolutely. then make sure you're filling your portfolio with a little bit more diversity. Yeah. So now let me ask you, so, so you've developed this style, this look, this theme that, that you are absolutely known for. Um, and that has obviously come from a decade, a decade and a half of work. At what point did you start? I mean, because obviously you started prior to honing just this look. You know, yeah. were you struggling at the beginning trying to adopt other styles? Were you like when you started, did you just take everything that you could and, and just kind of you know, acting as a chameleon? Like when did this kick in for you? I, I so out of school, they basically said, like, when you're going in for that first interview and this I, I was graduating uh in 2002 2003 something 2000 i think 2002 um and then I, it was right at a, a economic downturn mm. you know the economy sucked at the time yep and a lot of people Fresh were getting laid of off and then yeah. i graduated and i was like let's go find a job in this economy where everyone's getting fired <laughs> um <laughs> and the i remember my portfolio teacher was like you need to tell them that you'll do damn near anything anything like yep. you'll mop the floors you'll go you'll go polish the doorknobs on and you will you know go in in, in the paste up room and and clean up all the super 77 gunk on the side of the spray mount but whatever just tell them you will do it you'll take all the worst projects you'll take all the grunt work that you just want to work with them and you just want a chance you know just, they basically said like that's what you got to do right now and yep. so that's what i did and and coming out of school I, I, in this career, you, you know, you, you develop taste over time, you know, you develop yeah. kind of, and not just like, oh, I have good taste. It's like, I have my taste, you know, this is what I like. And then what I, I know sells, you, you learn that it's, it's wisdom over time. You know, you're doing this for 20 years, you're going to learn that. And, and it takes a while to find your niche. It does. Um, I, at the beginning, man, I was trying all sorts of different things. I was trying different Ooh. styles, you know, whether it's. I don't know, more modern, more grungy. Mm. You should see some of the ugly fonts I made a couple of years out of school. They're <laughs> awful. They're like so gross. It was so about time. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, the, the, the crazy thing is I came out back when like Flash was hitting hard. Fl Adobe, remember Macromedia oh, Flash? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Dude. And, and I get all my Flash. My, my first couple portfolio jobs or, and jobs I got because uh, they knew I could do their portfolio they're like oh man this this kid can program and code flash and he's super good at the animations and adding all sorts of sound effects to all the buttons and everything oh yeah let's hire this kid <laughs> you know like i'd have like freaking things bouncing all over the screen um <laughs> and it wasn't until gosh my third job out of college then all of a sudden, I, I got something into uh, into print magazine. I like I, I wanted like a legitimate national award. Dude, that's and actually this huge was in, like, for so early on. Two thousand four, two thousand five, something yeah. like that. So it was like three or I maybe mean, it's two thousand six. It's somewhere in there. I was working at this little shop called Industrio, and I came in there, and they were small. Uh, mm -hmm. It was like five people, and they didn't have the greatest reputation or portfolio. And the guy was like, who, who ran it, EJ McNulty, who's who's an awesome dude. And he's like, he's he leads this gigantic global like agency as the ECD of North America right now. He's like, he's big time. Um, but at the time, he he got this awesome offer to uh, uh, basically be funded to start an agency because it was his dream. And he was like on the board with it, uh, another guy, and he's like, listen take a shot and he gets to kick this whole thing off. And he, he's just kind of trying to figure out his way and uh, hiring people and, and just uh, trying to trying to make this thing right. And he came from a job where he was a salesman and like a really good salesman. He sold like pipe fittings of all things like and <laughs> pipe like all sorts of like stuff for like oil and sales. sales. Yes, hardcore sales. sales. Yeah. This man taught me so much about selling, selling. work. 
He yeah. was so good at it. And such a nice guy. And selling work is all about, in case you're wondering, it's it's not the greasy car salesman guy. It's the guy who you're like, dude, I want to invite this dude to my wedding after this. That's nice. that's the good salesman. The person you're like, let's go yep. grab a beer, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so true. So I, I learned a lot from him in that sense. But he, he basically gave me the keys to the creative. He's like, I'm not going to sit and nitpick your work. Um, I want you to wow. just basically stretch out and make amazing work and I will sell it. And I, I got a lot of great opportunities working there uh, and kind of figured out a style. And it was it was a great jump to get me into the you know the next step. Like then I went into advertising, worked as a I wanted to learn to be a art director, and so I bought a book on it and and started making commercials <laughs> and print ads and stuff like that. And then uh, I got the opportunity at Target. And uh, so you went in from service. industrial or wait, okay. so wait I, I, what was before industrial? I worked at a little shop called Initio, which sounds like industrial. <laughs> yeah, I fair enough. In Initio, the hands and O. I worked at a little shop called Uno, uh, which was a Hispanic focused uh, design shop cool. run by a guy named Luis Fitch. He's he's awesome, awesome artist. And uh, always keeps it small. Really, really amazing work. I learned a lot about color from him. Hmm. Uh, and then worked at industrial where I, I learned to sell and, and how to, to I basically really got to figure out what my style was and what my niche was at that point. Yeah. Worked at BBDO, that uh, still mm. ends in a damn O, um, <laughs> big old global ad agency. Yeah. And uh, worked on big brands yep. and then got the opportunity at Target, which uh, I don't know, I, don't, I came from an ad agency, so I was working like 60 hour weeks. It was all crazy and, and stressful and i come to target where people are working like you know they're working 40 hours and you know maybe even leaving a little early on friday and stuff like that oh, wow. and, and and they're just they're happy and they're just like you know they're getting by they're doing their work and i come in there i'm just like i want to make awesome work this is like the coolest client i've ever had it's freaking target man i've been working on hormel foods and stuff up until this man let, let, let's go <laughs> <laughs> and and i was taking on any any and every project I could possibly get, just like all the, like I did their home brand threshold and uh, their their core branding. Like I did two rounds of their the, the core branding that's like on the outside of all the stores and wow. what the bags look like and Crazy. all sorts of stuff, man. Crazy. So like if you go to Target, like there was a, there was a time period um, one year where was, I remember it was like in springtime. I had design, designed the seasonal signage when you walked in. I designed the stuff on the outside of the store on, on oh, those signs. Dude. And then I designed all these like end cap things, like all the end caps signs that when they didn't have one specific for a sale, mm -hmm. it was like some sort of thing about selling all their different ways, ways you get things shipped and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was like their, their four differentiating things, you know, 5% off with red card, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was like, those were on half, half the end caps in the store. There were, it was like, you could walk through the store and, look at the signs and I designed like, Jeez, like right. a and quarter of them and it was crazy rush right wow. when you're actually seeing your stuff yeah. out there and I mean okay you were going on purpose but you just stumble across it like on a, just a daily basis you're like oh shit I did that yeah. oh wow I did that right especially the quarter of a, a quarter of it a was quarter, crazy man. it was it was it was a cra crazy crazy moment for me and 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 that's it. I mean, I, I worked with teams, you know, it wasn't all, it wasn't like, Hey, it's the Alan Peter show. It wasn't that it was, <laughs> it, it was like, you know, I, I worked with awesome people and, and yeah. we made some awesome work, you know, like the great writers, uh, project managers, creative directors and stuff like that. You know, I had a lot of people helping me out and making these things come to life. Yeah. And I learned a lot at target too. So, um, th that, that really sounds like an ego trip the way I just described that. But like, for me, I, I was just excited. I was like, man, Target was growing up, man. Target was such a cool brand. So absolutely, yeah, it still, still is. is. It's yeah, well, yeah, and that's and, it, right? It's a huge design icon, right? Everybody, okay, because obviously, you know, we, we've seen it all up here. Up here, we only had a taste of Target for a little while, north of the yeah. border. And when we did, all the designers, you know, we, we all flocked to the store. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah. I guess everybody else was too damn what they were too damn cheap, and they yeah. were kind of going. They, they they were pushing back. So Target was yeah. only up here for for twelve months, but. Yeah. Dude, like it, it was, it would have been like working underneath um, a design icon, or I mean, we, no. Target is a design icon, but like under like a master or whatever, just because it just seems like that whole culture thrives mm -hmm. on design. No, they have such a big design team; it's yeah. crazy. It's like uh, and they over one hundred and fifty designers or something. Wow. It's 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 there's so many people because they have the clothing designers, you know, they have right. the product designers, they yeah. have the 
you know, so they have different departments of designers too. So there's just like, there's a lot of, just a lot of creative people that you can learn from and stuff like that. I remember working on, I was working on a storage and org thing where I had to do a, basically I wanted to do some dimensional type, yeah. but I wanted it. I had seen some stuff where it wasn't done in 3D and it was like physical than photographed. And I was like, oh, I want to do something like that. And I found the department that had 3D printers. And then I was like, here's what it to look like. I worked with a, a guy who rendered the whole thing. Then he printed it off. Then we sent it off to another shop to have it sanded down and painted. And and that we had like a photo studio in-house for shooting all the products Jeez, for .com. So we could like, I could go next door to the photo shoot studio and just, if I had an idea for a concept, we could shoot it. You know, it was, yeah. it was not wow. cool. It was so cool. That's yes, it was, so that was, that was yeah. an incredible in-house experience. So then, how do you, yeah. how would you compare then? Because I mean, we oh, we constantly have people reaching out, and I mean, it's yeah. they're always reaching out. Do I stay freelance? Do I go to an agency, or do I go in-house? So, what was the biggest differences for your experiences? Because you went agency, 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 big agency, and then Target in-house. Right. One of the great things about running your own studio and and taking on freelance work and and and, and choose you can choose how much if you have the opportunity where work is coming in and you don't you're not stressed about getting enough work mm -hmm. if if you have enough work coming in you can control the flow to to a degree I mean it, it's it's it takes a little bit to adjust but you can make sure that you're not going to get crazy overloaded yeah. so I think that's that's always the ideal thing I, I think is running your own thing because then you can keep the stress level right where you want it to be so it, it doesn't get too overwhelming if you're going to be going on you know like traveling or like you know something coming up or you're going to have a baby you can, you, can, breaks. you can cut it down a little bit and then you can amp ramp it back up so that's nice you can control the spigot um where you don't have as much control if you're working for somebody else no matter who it is no matter you know, agency or whatever. And then culture is another thing. You know, you're going to have different cultures at every place. You know, I've worked at little shops where the culture was more relaxed. I've worked at, you know, ad agencies where the culture was work all the time. And it was especially like crunch time when it was yeah. coming down to a, like time to present a uh, work at the end. And then <laughs> yeah. I worked in-house and in-house was great, but like, I think it's because, how do I explain it? It's like you had like, because there were so many cool projects, yeah. it'd be like that kid in Willy Wonka where there's like the chocolate, <laughs> chocolate river, and he just like can't stop just drinking just... the chocolate, <laughs> right? He just, and then he falls he, in and he, gets he, sucked he, in the damn yeah, thing. Yeah, he was just like, and he is... deserved it, damn yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Ruined it for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, the work and the projects were so awesome that I would take on a little bit more than a, a comfortable level. And that I could have, you mean? I, yeah. And I could have yeah. controlled that more. Yeah, 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 but I remember yeah. there were like certain times where like there was, there was like a moment on a shoot where uh, like near the end of my time there where I, I did like stress out and have a full on panic attack with the only <laughs> one I've ever had in my life just cause it was, it was like late night and, and it, there was so much going on. And I was trying to do a freelance project after like, like I, I was, I was, I was shooting the work and, and it, it, it was, it was a campaign where I needed to mock. I basically photograph it. And then before we could wrap up the photo, I had to mock up, make sure it fit nicely in the layout because mm. it, the photo had to integrate with the graphics. Yep. And so I had to like speed mock it up and <laughs> with it, it, all 50 of the shots that we were doing. Oh. And it was, it was so stressful. And then I'd go home or not go back to my, my place I was staying and, and then try and work on this project, the other project at night. And, and my wife was like, oh, I'm going to come visit, you know, come see you while you're out on the shoot. So she was going to come out there. And um, it, was, it was just like, there, there was a, like, a all lot of it was going great on. stuff. Yeah. I just, I just was overdoing it. And it was my own fault. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to have a, a panic attack ever again. I, I didn't like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jeez, yeah. But that wasn't, that wasn't why I left the Target or anything. You know, I, yeah. um, you know, I got, I got a lapsed laptop back when I was working there, mm -hmm. um, like my own laptop. And I had all this time, we, we had moved out to Egan, uh, which is a suburb of Minneapolis, St. Paul. And it was a 45 minute bus commute to and from work rather than driving and sitting in tra traffic. I would just sit on the bus in traffic with, with all the business That's people. Smart. That's like, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And, and I would work on freelance projects and fun little like passion projects and things like that. And, uh, I, I I hadn't really done that much freelance. I didn't want to work at night and overdo it while I was working there. 
but on the bus, I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm just going to be sitting on, and he's sitting here, like, watching movies Dude, on my phone or like reading a book or something. That's like an hour and a half every day. Yeah. That's a ton yeah. of time. And, well, I, I like designing. Yeah. yeah. So um, I did that for a while, and I was getting some cool clients. I was doing some stuff for Nike. Uh, I, I, oh, gosh, what I, I did a whole bunch of really cool projects on the bus. And, and ESPN, I did, <laughs> did a whole bunch years. of stuff for ESPN <laughs> on the bus. <laughs> And, and so I'd be like sitting there, you know, those long seats on the side of the bus. Yeah. I'd be sitting there with like my, my Pantone book on, on the side of my like, Pantone oh, laptop sure, sure. here. There's that graphic here. designer again, taking up the whole half of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> they probably thought it was crazy. But, uh, my, my wife, God bless her soul, does her taxes. And I remember at the, it was, it was the second year I had to have the laptop. She was doing the tax at the end of the year, and she's like, "Damn it, Alan! You you, you made more money on the bus this year, and you made it Target." <laughs> <laughs> and so, oh, it, it, back way back to that first job, the initial one. Remember, yeah. I was saying I was working late nights, and Nick was looking at badges. Yep. Mm-hmm. My wife was in school at the time, and we weren't married yet. And she would she would come in and hang out and do her homework, and I would stay until like one in the morning for like no reason other than just like try and make all my projects as good as possible, try and get be better at my craft. And, um, and we would talk about like, well, what would the future be like? You know, what are our dreams and hopes and stuff? And we always, we always wanted to have our own agency. It was always a dream of ours. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is I had, I had read this book right here. Wait, what is that one? Paul oh, Rand yes. by Stephen oh, Heller. My buddy, Paul Rand. Yes, I, I, read, I read this book around that time. And I was like, this guy, like, I want to do this. I, I don't, I want, I want to be like this man. Yep. I like his logos. I like how he works. I like the craft. I like the creativity. I like his style. I like everything about what's going on in here. Yep. Yep. I, I, like, he has like that beautifully designed gravestone even. Yep. It's, like, it's nuts. <laughs> and I'm like, Paul Rand, man. I'm like one day, one day I want that book that that says Alan Peters across here. Yes. How amazing would that be? Yes. And that's kind of like the spark for like always wanted to write a book. That was that was and a coming. list. On the well, list I know, I right? Mean. Well, I mean, again, that is how this whole thing started. It's because yeah. you, you are coming up with your book, right? I, again, right. as soon as I saw it, I'm like, congratulations! Boom. I put in the order, and I was like, yeah. I want to let you know, I already bought it. I already bought it. I already bought it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. but still, like, how awesome is that? Like, I mean, that's that's like a that's a whole nother level, yeah. Right? Because, like you just said, you just you just credited Paul Rand's book, and now oh. this is not, you know, um, you know, this is not per se, uh, you know, look at all my stuff I've been working on. Look at, you know, this is my story of my life. You're actually, you know, putting down some some of your whole thoughts, beliefs, everything in place with this, right? You might look at the cover and you're like, but Alan. What's with this book? You know, is it just, is it 200 pages of just logos? Is that it? You know, no, no, you know, there's so much more to it. So the book's called Logos at Last. And um, I, I get into exactly that. How, oh, what makes a timeless logo? How, how do you make something like that? Like, what are the qualities that go into making a mark that's going to stand the test of time? That's going to not have to be replaced when the trend wears off in four years yeah. or when the the new uh, cmo comes on and he's like well, time yeah. to redo the logo oh, you know that one sucks anyways Jeez. um <laughs> yeah. yeah we lived yes. through that yeah yeah we all have um <laughs> and so i have i, I apparently I share the same type of experience as well <laughs> but oh, anyway yeah. go on yeah, so I, I go into like uh, the, the, all the pillars of like what makes. Okay, I've done a lot of research. I've studied. The, I've been doing this for a long time, as you guys, as a, you know, we we all have for yeah. that matter. But I've been doing this for about twenty years, and um, I figured out, at least from my perspective, what makes a logo timeless. You know, there's certain things you can't control, like time. You know, it, it, you know, obviously that's the true test of a timeless <laughs> logo. You know, is it going to stand the test of time? And then with time, you know, people see it more and more, and and it becomes more ingrained. Mm-hmm. Uh, the marketing money, you know, like how much money is invested? You know, McDonald's is McDonald's is is that the best logo you've ever seen? No, probably not. But it's one yeah. of the most memorable because you've seen it so many times because there's so much money back in it. Yeah, it's in Absolutely. the architecture. Yeah. It's on the sign. It's 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 on it. They have built it to their brand. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the marketing buy, that's a big part of it. And you don't have control over that as a designer. Yeah. And then the last one that you don't have control over is 
the product quality. You know, how often do you like design something that where the product just sucks? You know, so and, and true, there's dude. nothing you do about that. <laughs> yeah. And, but then here's the, here's the things that you can control, guys. Yeah. There's um your personal passion, like how much you're going to pour into this. Like, yeah. Usually, yeah. when you see these marks that that have stood the test of time, they're usually designed by somebody where like they're they're just pouring. I, I've got a book over there, a Saul Bass book, and I remember mm. there, there's like some pictures in the back where he's like working with a team on like United or like there's another photo of like the room, the war room when they're working on the Bell logo. And it's like hundreds of sketches on the wall, hundreds and hundreds Jeez. of them. It's it, it's insane. And you know, they're just like, poor. That, that, that requires a lot of passion, a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of just, they they could do 10 and they could just go in there and, and sell them and, <laughs> and that would be fine. And they would so get away true. with it. <laughs> true. But to pour yourself into it at that level, yeah. you know, that there's a passion there. So there's, yeah. you know, that passion, Agreed. um, 100%. I, I put on the list and I have a spread about the beauty, you know, and, and my, uh, my, uh, uh, publisher was like, are you sure when he was, that seems like very subjective. I'm like, well, you know, certain things are just beautiful and, and color colors can be subjective. Like you might hate the color orange or you might like the color orange, you know, that that's subjective, but if something is beautiful, um, yeah, you could be like, oh, this person likes it, this person hates it. But usually, if you did like a, if you tested a hundred people, you know, it's gonna go one way or the other. Might eighty percent this way, it's or whatever seventy percent, thirty percent. There's, there's, it's gonna lean one way, and mm -hmm. usually a lot of that has to do with, is it a beautiful mark? You know, like the CBS eye is a beautiful mark. That's yeah, so good. It is. You know, you, you look back on some, some of these. The, the IBM logo that mm -hmm. that uh, Paul did, it's, it's so good. It's so beautiful. It it, it's is. so simple. And then uh, originality, mm -hmm. you know, it, it has to be original. You know, it, there's there's so many marks. Like how many circle logos have you seen before? Jeez, Whether it's USA Today or like like a ring. I mean, I've seen uh, so Target. many circle logos. <laughs> yeah, Target. <laughs> <laughs> but Target, at least, like they own it. Like, yeah, they like, have that's owned ours. It. They have a whole, they have like their whole like legal team like defending it. Like we own the Side. Don't you mess imagine? With us. And you cannot fine, use you know, a like, circle in your logo. Them. We own that. <laughs> <laughs> that's them, you know. Those big brands like they'll, they'll like buy a Pantone color. They will. Like, I know. They will, yeah. Pantone color. Oh, yeah. That's hardcore. <laughs> and that's that's cool, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, originality is, is is important. Uh, functionality is it going to be functional? Can you like it, 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 it to be to let, stand the test of time? It, you can't have things that are pain in the butt. Like I've had so many clients where, where I start working with them, and they're like, "Hey, we have these pain points. You know, our lo current logo is hard to embroider, or our current logo is a nightmare because it's you know five yeah. colors, and every time we print something, it's super expensive, or has gradients in it, or something. There, there's all these issues that make it not functional. Yeah. You know, for for reproducing, and so." If you want it to not get replaced, make it easy to use, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. um, color. I think color plays a big part. I remember uh, back when Lander did um, FedEx, um, the, the marketing objective was like, because they had Federal Express before. Mm -hmm. yep. like, the marketing guy was like, they remember reading a, a story about this. And he's like, I want to make sure you can see those trucks in New York City in rush hour from two blocks away mm, and really identify nice. it as a FedEx truck. Yeah. Yep. That is like the brief. Yep. Yeah. Right. And so they're like, okay, we need to right now. They had to, they had had a Federal Express diagonal on the side of the truck. Well, they want to fill that space, and so they went down to FedEx. You know, oh, fewer dude, characters, brilliant. a little bit more rectangular. Yeah, that's they, brilliant. They put in that beautiful little negative space arrow oh. that a lot of people don't even see at first. Yeah. yeah. But then they made the purple super saturated yep. and they made the orange super saturated they just amped them up just a little bit yep. you know and they probably charged a million bucks for for making those changes yep. right um but color you know having something a little bit more brighter saturated you know and that's not always the case you know sometimes you're doing a more of an earthy brand and it needs to be more earth tones but i think color plays a big role in whether something's gonna be timeless because there are trendy colors and uh you know if if you want something to be timeless you know a lot of the times when you see a rebrand where it's a evolution yep. where they just yep. take the same mark and amp it up yep, yep. They're just, they juice the colors a little bit more mm -hmm. yep. so why not do that right away from the beginning yeah. um the story you know is there a story behind it you know how many monograms have you seen where you're just like yeah it looks like another monogram logo mm. nice yeah there's nothing memorable about it or the worst is like a single letter in a circle i'm like come on dude <laughs> like, that's easy. that's too that's easy. the logo <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be more to it you know like what's it memorable how how are you what's that hook 
you know, Nike, it's speed, right? It looks fast. Yeah. Uh, that CBSI, you know, you, it's, it's, uh, you're looking out, you know, feed, they're feeding you the news, yeah. you know, from their perspective, right? Mm, totally. And it's, it, there's a story behind those things. So you, you can, you can remember them. And then, uh, the last thing is, you know, simplicity, you know, it's gotta be simple that not so simple that you lose a story, mm -hmm. but really simple. Because that's the other thing. If somebody's going to evolve your logo or take it another step later on, that's they're they're going to make it a little bit brighter and they're going to shave a little bit off. How do we how do we do it in fewer moves? Do that from the beginning. Jeez, that's brilliant, actually. You know, I've never thought about that. Like, yeah. you know, don't think about what you're creating right now, but think mm -hmm. about what somebody else would do to your logo twenty years from now. Exactly. Right? That's how could brilliant. how can you take so get down with it and then look at it and be like, okay, how can if I were to evolve this and take it to the, uh, you know, one step simpler, but still have enough there to tell the story, you know, how would I, how would I evolve it? Yeah. You know, so those, and that's just part of the book. You know, I go into my whole brand mark process. How do I make brand marks? And we can talk about that in a little bit. Um, I get into uh, how I, so I like to start with figuring all the subject matter. And yeah. then, and then I, I work with my client to come up with that. I'll call it like the brand noun process, come up with what's, what can be like, what's the story, mm -hmm. you know, is it going to be, you know, combined a star and some ends? Like, that's one of the logos in my book, you know, is this like, yes. you know, like a pathway and a P or a P and a D you can look at it a couple different ways like that, right. Leading to a, a middle goal. You know, what, what are the different things? What, what are, what are the, what's the iconography that we can use as the, the Legos to start building something. Start building that and so I have a whole section in there where I break down like, all the different ways to combine and bring things together, whether it's, you know, negative space, uh, the overlapping geometry, visual rhythm, uh, uh, unexpected twist, unexpected visual, visual flow. So I'm, I'm giving all sorts of tips. So when, when people are getting in there, I've, I've got books over here, here. <laughs> I love this. He's got a wall of books. So I, no offense, this, 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 whoever wrote this, this book, it says like designing brand identity. And it goes into all this strategy and, and it is like almost like Excel sheets, like level, like, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to figure this out and figure Make out what the target market and all this stuff like that. Yeah. And it's like all, all the stuff that goes into writing a brief. And there's great information here. Mm -hmm. That said, if you try and look in here and like figure out, okay, I need to make a brand mark. <laughs> oh, well, you know, how can I make an original awesome brand mark that looks like it's like it, it's going to work well? There's nothing about that in here. Yeah, That's what my whole book's about. Yeah. My whole book is like, Let's actually make some logos. This is for the designer. This isn't for the strategy person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Person, This is for the person who's going to be building the damn thing. Well, because I think and so many people struggle with, like, just yeah. understanding what the process is. I think, you know, everybody's process, or not everybody, but I think so many people's process is they go online, they take a look at what's out there, and they what's tweak hip? it and make it what's hip, what's yeah. not, and make it their own. Yeah. And, you know, again, we've been doing this for way, way before this was available online. Mm -hmm. And we had to actually come up with processes, just like the, you know, uh, the fathers before us who did, mm -hmm. right? Yep. The process is where the value is, it's where the money is, it's what you sell. And it, what, it, mm -hmm. it's, what, it's what changes a $100 logo to a $10,000 logo plus, right. in my opinion. It's, it's mm -hmm. just everything else, just like you said. Yep. So remember earlier when I was saying like, how awesome would it be if I got to write a book on just badge hunting and going, going yeah. and looking for badge and crest? Yeah. I have a whole section about inspiration and badge hunting in here. So it's, 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 it's part Dude, of the book. That's so it's awesome. not the whole book, but it's <laughs> that's I, so cool. yeah, I worked it in there. <laughs> and then, yeah. You'll get that right, big got, one. one. You'll get the big one. Yeah. We'll sponsor yeah. part of that. Okay. I just want, so you I want the big one. <laughs> um, but then like brand extensions, you know, like, cause I love like taking a logo, taking the geometry and extending out yeah. to patterns, yeah. to icons, Dude. to flourishes You're and so bad shapes, crazy. custom yep. typography, illustration. How can you take what you've learned here and then flush it out to a yeah. whole system? So nobody ever says make the logo bigger yeah. because <laughs> the brand is embedded in the DNA of every piece of the brand identity. Yeah. So that's, I, I get into that. And then I talk about brand evolutions, but I, I'm going on and on, but, um, I, running a creative shop, you know, I, I talk about my shop and how I got the inspiration for it, why you would do that, how it's a great creative outlet to make the type of work that you want to make more of. And then also, then I, then I also do case studies and yeah. not just case studies, but like uh, going into like, here's the sketch phase and here's the, this, and here's the concepts and like working through the whole, the whole darn thing nice. and showing case studies. And then also showing passion projects. I mean, this book is jam packed full of, uh, information 
that's going to help somebody like, like not, not just pretty pictures like if, if yeah if somebody actually wants to sit down and read the thing you know this isn't learn... just a fanboy book this yeah. isn't just something i would buy because oh i love his work i love his work which i would yeah. do okay in all <laughs> fairness but you're actually giving some like uh, some meat helpful meat advice yeah. to help you yeah people. yeah oh, that's nice. I, i'm trying to share i mean that's that's what I, I always wanted to teach that's always kind of been in the background oh, like nice. oh man i would love to go and teach, teach a class but at the same time if I, I always thought like, hey, if I read a book, you know, I, I could teach a lot more people than a class of twenty kids. You know, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think it could be a lot more impactful. So I'm ex- I'm excited about this opportunity. Oh, this is and, this is crazy, dude. Yeah. Like honestly, excited, it is. Yeah. It's like and like like we talked about. Like when you're able to publish a book, it like takes you to a new level. Yeah. It's like our parents would be like, whoa, yeah. there's a book about him. Now he's legit. He's not, all these years, they had no idea what I would yeah, do for a living. Doing, yeah. But now there's a book. Well, he has a book. That's why he's good at what he does. Yeah, oh, that's, dude, that's, that's amazing. Great. That's great. And, it's, and especially something, you know, like a deep dive for the designer. I think that's, that's really, really cool. So then with that being said, right now you yeah. are, you because you've got a deadline of October for release. Is that correct? Was that, is that October? Yeah. Yeah. But I have, to have, I have to have it done by middle of April. So oh, I, I'm gosh. like, I'm almost finished. Oh, you are. I, but I, then there's all the refinements and, you know, oh, fine tuning. So what's, and, and, what's like a day of your life look like right now then? Because obviously you're still working, I'm assuming. <laughs> I have uh, so I've got four kids, and, <laughs> and like I said, Say we no more. <laughs> Maria, Maria homeschools them, and I work from home, and so it's every day is a, is a little bit uh, is a little bit wild. Let's put it that way. Yes. Um, and, and you never know what's going to happen. You know, like I told you guys earlier. You know, there was an iPad got put in the yeah. washing machine today. It's so, like, you know. it's crooked. Yeah. The thing is crooked. <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> um, and uh, our, our little guy, our little guy had some serious health issues at the beginning of the year. He has a super rare uh, disease where he um, has like malformed lymph nodes in his cheek. Mm. And so there was, we were going to the hospital and the doctor constantly for a while. That's resolved. But it was, while he was going through that, there were like two or three months where I was getting up with the baby three times a night yeah, probably yeah, yeah. and then trying to run a business and trying to write a book and trying to do <laughs> I was gonna say so how do you how do you balance that without losing your mind and going postal um the way i i i set it up for myself is that i, I just was like I'm, I'm, I'm take on less projects during this time mm-hmm. right and i don't know if i've done that that well i've still taken on projects of course i, 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 tur- I turned away probably more there's been some good ones coming through. Let's put it that way. There's some really, really nice, nice, tasty projects where I'm like, oh, I, I got to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it, it, everything works out. You always get to the other side of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had all of these moments in my life where I'm like, oh, I can't wait until, you know, like two months from now, that's when I'll have all this, whatever. My senior thesis written in college or, or whatever, whatever thing I was dreading at that point in my career, you know, some big project that was super difficult and we're going to have to get it all done. And, you know, I, I, there's always, there's always been little things where I'm like hoping and praying and waiting for this moment to be all done. I try not to stress about it as much now. And now that I'm older, I I think it it comes with just being an old man, (laughs) an old crusty man. My biggest challenge and most difficult thing that I have in my life right now is being a good dad. I, I want to be the best Very dad cool. I can be for my kids. Yeah. And it is, it is a hard job. With, with, with four kids, it, it, is, it is a real challenge. Uh, when I'm at work and, and sitting in front of this computer making logos, that's not the hard part of my job day. That's, that's the part I'm just yeah. like, I'm yeah. like a happy kid. I'm like, I'm like the, the it's like easy, 13 year old kid that's sitting in front of yeah. a Nintendo all day. That's, that's yeah. how I feel. Yeah, I'm just exactly. like, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's true. It, it's, it's, it's perspective, it's relaxing, right? It's fun. It's, 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 I, I don't know. I just, I, I love what making great work. That's, yeah. that's what I like doing. And, um, being with the kids, you know, I, I love being with them in the, in the same way, but different, you know? Uh, and, but it's, it's just more of a challenge. I don't know. Everybody's built for different things and they're good at different things. And God made it. So a design came to me, like I, I, I put in the work and everything, but he just made it. So like, it wasn't a real challenge for me, yeah. but being a dad, I don't know if it is for everybody, man, it is hard. It's a hard. <laughs> it is <game>. hard. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, man. 
Honestly, I, yeah. I, I couldn't have said it better. It's like I feel the design comes natural. Yeah. I do that. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. It's easy. Even tough times in design are just like a cakewalk mm-hmm. when it comes to anything else. But, you know, yeah. parenting, my kids, you know, for a couple of years, I'm not going to lie. I, I think I was focused a little too much on the business and growth and this and that. Everything that yeah. that society tells you you need to do and, and YouTube tells you and Instagram tells you. And I think, you know, and sadly, I did neglect them a little bit more than I should have. Um, I caught that quick enough, I feel. But right. I saw that if I wouldn't have changed my ways, it really would have fucked things up. Would've, Sorry, it would have fucked yeah. things up totally. Yeah. It would have. Yeah. Um, and I was able to correct that, re, you know, re- put everything back in perspective. I didn't change my business in any which way, shape, or form. It mm-hmm. was just my outlook, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. How, I, how I approached everything. And I feel I still put the same amount of hours in and everything. It's just, it was perspective. It was just a matter mm-hmm. of realizing, you know, both were equally important, just in very different ways. Mm-hmm. One was, yeah. you know, self-fulfillment. One was like legacy, if you want to put it that way. And if, if my kids see me stressing and bugging and, and, you know, crabby all the time because, you know, if I'm not at home, I'm thinking about work and this and that. Well, that's, that's what they're going to turn into. And I'm going to raise these little assholes. <laughs> and I don't want that, even though I know we that. preach about being angry designers and, and being angry about the space. But, you know, we're still fundamentally about, you know, people first, human first, be good mm-hmm. to, to everybody. Be good to your fellow brother. I mean, and I can't, I can't. I couldn't live with myself if my kids turned out to be assholes because yeah. I was too selfish on what I'm doing right now, right? Yeah. So it was finding that balance. So I hear you, brother. I yeah. totally do on that part. Yeah, man. It's it's tough. It, 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 how, how do I put it? I Because I, I'm with them all the time. Mm-hmm. You know? like, it's, it's not like I'm going anywhere. And, and the thing is, you know, I'm not working at a place like Target where I'm just hanging out with my my buds all day. <laughs> like, going, like I like, stand up and walk over and be like, "Hey, man, what's up? I like that font you chose." <laughs> um, <laughs> I, 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 I love Impact, <laughs> Sean. Good job on that Impact choice, buddy. Impact. He always he always rips on me because I like Impact. Dude, I like, like Impact. I'm not going to make any apologies <laughs> for that. A meme wouldn't be a meme without impact. <laughs> um. Now, now, don't get me wrong. I don't use it anymore. Yes, he there's does. No, there's no point to it. We had to put in an office policy at Z Factor that no computer was yeah, allowed to have impact it's on locked. it. It's locked. It's locked and safe. Yeah. I'm a sucker for Helvetica. A lot of people hate Helvetica, no. but that's oh, that's probably my only one where people there's certain people who are like, oh, use Helvetica, you're such a loser. Oh. Um, but I, I think Helvetica is a great pun. Oh, yeah, dude, you can, yeah, yeah, you, you know what? Lot, you, unfortunately, you can't go wrong with Helvetica. It's, it's just I, I feel know. like everybody jumped on the Helvetica trend, or mm-hmm. not trend. Everybody jumped on it, which turned it into a trend, which yeah. now on the tail side is making everybody roll their eyes when you use it. But that's why right. you know secretly I kind of intermix inter once in a while with Helvetica because it's so close i can it be like well, i don't use how look at i use inter check out um aonic if you haven't used aonic? that aonic. it's aonic? by mash by mash studio they're awesome oh. uh a- it's a e o n i k it is a great helvetica substitute oh. all right all right that's, all right. that's good. good that's good to know yeah yeah it's Ooh. nice to ask because uh calibre or maybe it's caliber i'm not sure how you pronounce it wow you use that that's, one that's, really that one's pretty solid um you know what I always like? I love when um, big companies uh, like like Pentagram or something. It's like, yeah. oh, we just did this rebrand, and here's and they actually say whatever sans serif they use. And I'm always like, well, what are they? Yeah, this one. What are they on? What are they doing? <laughs> Which, what's the cool new sans serif? <laughs> Tell me, Pentagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, or, or when people post like a, a brand manual online, I'm always like, well, "What fonts are these?" What fonts are yeah, yeah, yeah. Back it up. You deconstruct it. You do your own. <laughs> well, and that's what, you know what? How often do I tell people? Like, people are asking, "How do I get? How do I elevate myself? How do I get to the next level?" And yeah. my first go to is find people you like, find work you like, and deconstruct it. And mm-hmm. then reconstruct it. So do exactly that. Go to Pentagram, see what they're launching, and break it down into pieces, and then rebuild it up or stuff, or rebuild up your project. You know, masters like Paul Rand and mm-hmm. Saul Bass and all these folks, you know, e- even folks alive, like maybe you're into like Draplin or George Boca or, or um, yep. gosh, Brent Couchman. He, he runs a, an awesome studio out of San Francisco. Um, you could easily, like, you know, you take their work, 
and you could figure out how it's made. I think I think the magic and, and the trick with it is uh, to not turn into a clone of that. Interesting. You know, and students students have a hard time with that. They'll they'll reproduce and like rip something off basically yeah. like, completely. It won't be their idea. Um, they're just not only like looking at and studying a style. It's like they're they, they're just reproducing it. And if you do that, like like let's say you're studying something, and you're figuring out how it's made. Like as a student, just don't post that work. I, I think that's yeah, my advice agreed. for you. Like yeah. you like do it for yourself. Learn yeah. how they did it. Yeah. And then then on your next project, when it's actually for a client or whatever, you know, take some of your learnings and and apply it. You know, it, it, as inspiration. Yes. Not as yeah. you know emulation, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, er, but everything is a remix. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. Um, there's a video series on YouTube called Everything's a Remix, and it's all about it, it's based on music, uh, but it's like Led Zeppelin, and, and, and it goes breaks down like every all their influences and how like all these songs are like direct lifts here and there and yeah. samples and things like that, yeah. or the Beatles, all of these major bands that have been so influential, like they there are especially nowadays you'd have a hard time. Uh, getting by trademark wise (laughs) because they've made it way more difficult now and that that hurts innovation in general Mm -hmm. but artwork is the same way you know it it, it, with uh with books uh they call it the great conversation right Mm -hmm. you know it's it's you know you look at jk rowling and and her books are all harry potter books you know and how much lord of the rings do you see in there you know you go back c.s lewis uh you can see all sorts of influences yeah in her books I'm sorry that that was really loud. <laughs> that um, was huge <laughs> loud. I thought it was my pocket. <laughs> uh, uh, but, it, you know, it, it, same thing applies to graphic design. You know, you see a lot of inspiration. Uh, and, and you end up seeing a, a lot of overlap when people are inspired by the same people. Yeah. You know, you can see, like, I have a unique style, but you probably see, you can see other designers that have similar styles. Or, and it's it's not that we're ripping each other off. It's that we're all, like... I really like that, you know, I really like Saul Bass and I really like this, this Alvin Lustig and I really like, you know, it's like yeah, all the, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have a lot of the same designers where you, you, you're inspired by their work. Yeah. And because of that, uh, there is, you know, the influence, you know, it, it tends to be similar. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I agree with what you said about, um, you know, following similar, you know, looks and, you know, and when it, that, yeah. you can follow that with line weight and, you know, white spacing and, and font choices. But what mm-hmm. you do, unlike anybody I've ever seen, and you do it on a regular basis, okay, is your attention to to white space mm-hmm. like i mean you're pulling off that fedex logo with the arrow again and again and again right like you can't copy that shit. i mean like your logos like and again i'm going to show these on the youtube channel but dp yep. north stars what yeah. you did with you know your your That's passion great. project usa logo i'm guessing it was um mm-hmm. your golden bear equities mm-hmm. your firecraft pizza that for the record got ripped off locally up in mississauga oh locally serious? somebody oh. locally up here so we're gonna go pay them a visit okay Okay, yeah. we're gonna send the oh, angry man. designers up there to that, be like that logo has been ripped off so many times. It's crazy. I, like I, I called somebody like a, a pizza place out on the other day, but it's been it's, some designer had put it on like Getty, and oh, I had to I had to get that on. taken down. And, well, the, the, it's been ripped off repeatedly, and it just drives me crazy. I, that one and the Egan logo. The Egan logo Egan. has been ripped nice. off so many times, yeah. and it's like giant companies in Brazil using it. I'm like, oh, what? Wow. Okay, well, let's first talk about that. Let's before we get into how you get to these awesome negative space. How do you yes. not lose your shit? I mean, again, I and so again, sometimes I just my yeah. blood boils. I cringe. I I spend a day trying to figure out how to reply back to somebody who dissed <laughs> Alan, only not to, and I absorb it. I absorb it. How do you not like go nuts on this? I think this kind of thing has been happening forever. Yeah. You know, it's always happened. You know, whether you're going to like a, I don't know. A, uh, a thrift store and seeing some, you know, knockoff shirt or whatever, or, or like in, ugh, I'm trying to th- figure out, like a flea market. Mm. I know somebody's selling a bunch of fake coach purses or whatever it is, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. there's, there's uh, this kind of thing has happened for years. It's just more apparent now with social media and with Fair. the internet, you know, it, you, you, it's hard to hide it. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard yeah. to get away with yeah. it. And it, so it, as a designer, you end up seeing it more. Um, I do, 
I think when I was younger, I used to get heated about it a lot more. And now that I'm like, it just, this happens so much. And my work gets seen by a lot of people. I've got a lot of followers, man. On like a, like yeah. Instagram, it's like over a hundred thousand people. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. It's bound to get, to, to, like, if it's not directly ripped off, it's where you look at something, you're like, eh, it's really close to something I did, but you don't, you're like, whatever, yeah. just keep it. It's fine. <laughs> Jeez. Um, how do you, it, yeah, it, it, it's, I give you fine. credit. It's dude. fine. <laughs> I, 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 is it I, flattering? I or is that just a bunch of bull? No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think it ever would be. Somebody rips off your work, you're like, man, I put so much heart into that. Yeah. And like and yeah. hours and, and, and the just. hard work. And they just put I it on all and this work. stole it. Yeah, well, I do, I do 15 brand marks that you present to a client. I don't do three. I do 15. And wow, I have to do a whole dude. bunch to get to that 15 wow. before it narrows to three. And then they go down. I, I do a lot of hard work wow, dude, to get to that weird. one that, like, distilled down golden nugget. Man, we were watching this show on the elements the other day yeah. um, because, of the you know, homeschooling. And so we're eating dinner and we're watching this awesome Nova special on, on the elements. And they're taking, uh, they, like, have these giant bulldozers full of dirt. And then they... they they're going to make gold, you know, they're going to get the gold out of it and they have to distill it down, distill it down, distill it down. And finally they get down to this pile, like muddy dirt. And then they take that and they distill it down. And finally they end up with like a couple of gold bars that are worth like a million and a half a piece. And it's awesome. And it took like, you know, multiple truckloads and, and I don't know how many hours and a huge giant space that could, that could do this, but you get down to that pure essence and it, it takes a lot to get there. So yeah, yeah when somebody just walks up and be like, Oh yeah. shit, yeah. you know, I can look at my fake gold. Yeah. I made it too. Yeah. Look. yeah. I made it, it too. Classic. I, I just changed the color. <laughs> I know. <right? laughs> yeah. It's totally different. You work hard on that, man. Yeah. All right. Fine, fine. Good for you for being calm. But how do you come up with all these, like you find the most amazing uses of negative space, like you know, and not, not to mention the stuff you did with the like uh, your what is it, Velocity Youth Program, or your FM lines, the or FM. the the freaking bicycle, yes. you know, Einstein, like, like dude, what? Okay, let's start with the negative space. How? Okay, so I'm I make a lot of stuff. I work <laughs> I work with. I, so I might not take on a lot of clients, yeah. but I, I, I charge a little bit more because I do a lot for each one. Like I said, yeah. I do, I, I'm thinking about that Saul Bass wall that has a hundred mm -hmm. logos on it. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta step my game up. You know, if that's, that's, if that's what I'm aiming for and I want to be like that dude, then I gotta be like that dude. And I gotta yeah, yeah. work my butt off and I gotta put, I gotta put the time in and you put the time and you come up with the, the good logo and, and people talk about it, then you're able to charge more so you can do okay. that whole process, right? Yeah. Um, that Because people, there's companies out there charging a million dollars for logos. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not yeah. charging a million dollars for a logo. Yeah. But I, I've charged 50 grand for one. Yeah. And and, and that's 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 not every time. Believe yeah. me, I'm of not course, charging of course, charges $50,000 for, for a logo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> it had, you know, they, depending on the, the company and it the size happens and the you're not a 500 hundred dollar guy i yes. yes no yeah. right and, and and it takes if you make it's how do you put it it's like walking in and, and going up to the slot machine and trying to get the jackpot and then just sitting there for like 15 days just putting quarters yeah. until you finally so you're like you're gonna hit it eventually yep you know, you sit there for a month and a half and you just like have like unlimited supply of coins you're gonna hit that jackpot yeah. and and no matter how much time you put in, no matter how good you are, you got to work hard to get something that's really good. Like that bicycle poster with the stripes. Yeah. That's one of the best things I've ever made. And that mm. was a long time ago. And you think I, I don't want to keep making logo <laughs> posters as good as that every yeah. time? Of course I do. But, yeah. you know, sometimes lightning strikes, right? Yeah. And yeah. That, that's, that's one of my favorite pieces. Same with yeah. negative space logos. Yeah. It seems you're like, man, he's done like 12 negative space logos. And I'm like, yeah, and I've been doing this for 20 years, yeah. man. I've yeah. been doing it for 20 years. I've made thousands of logos, so yeah. many brand marks. Right. If I'm doing 15 every time, and I, let's say, let's say to get to those 15, I'm doing 100 sketches, you know, like, so if I'm doing, dang, that's loud. <laughs> um, I've, oh no and it's just somebody bought some on squarespace it's gonna it's gonna like send me like four emails right now oh, here's, oh, no. here's the pay for here's the it's oh man um <laughs> Dude, there he goes again. Yeah. don't you touch it man 
<laughs> I, I don't get that many emails usually. Oh, you know what? I, you know what? His I wife can Maria is in the other room sending him right now. No, it's let me make Alan look like he's popular. I quit right my now. mail. Okay, okay, good. It, it is gone for good, dude. Oh, that was fun. Oh, no. okay. okay. I, well, if somebody buys something on my Printful shop, it, it says like somebody sent you a PayPal thing, and then I get another email that says. Printful says the order came in. Yeah. Now the order, and then I get another email. The yeah. order's been submitted. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's been now your order's in process. It's, it's like five emails. Like, Four bam, bam, things bam, 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 together bam. just to say, yeah, this happened. Yeah. Thank I could you. probably opt out of all of them, <laughs> but I haven't. Um, that's like the one thing where I'm like, I'm like, yeah, and I yeah. sold a poster, and it's like, because I don't sell a ton. I don't sell a ton. Of art. Sometimes I do, but but I get excited still if I'm like, yeah, I sold a T-shirt. Yeah, totally. It gets me excited. Okay. Uh, Negative space logos. Yes, 20 years, thousands and thousands and thousands of sketches to get to 12 yeah. negative space logos where I'm like, these are solid. You know, solid. I did you... I did one uh, at the beginning of the year, maybe it was the end of last year, for a, uh, like a wine club, from a Texas wine club. And it has a horseshoe with a negative space wine glass. Oh. That's like the last one I did where I'm like, that's solid. It is uh, solid. I love uh, uh, Firecraft. Dude, Firecraft, man, I, I, I was, uh, I had hopped on uh, uh, one of Draplin's live feeds during the pandemic. Oh. It, I, I don't know if you guys saw this, but he goes, uh, uh, Lay says, she's like, she's like, Alan's in here. And Draplin's like, Alan, I want to put you on right now. I want to talk to you. And I'm like, <laughs> Damn. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I'm like kids downstairs, like running. I'm like, <laughs> running you. Like, yes, Jumping all over yes. you. Legos. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drop, drop everything and, and he's like he's like man i was in south dakota and i was getting some pizza from from a, a pizza truck pizza? and the logo was awesome and i was like where did you where did you get this logo designed it's amazing and they're like oh this guy alan peters he's like oh i know that guy i know that guy this is good and he goes alan alan you taught me something that day about logo design <laughs> You should feel damn good about that. Like something like that. I was like, I was like, fuck yeah. yeah right <laughs> on. Like right on. Like, he's, oh my the, God. he's the man, you know? He, he is the man. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. That, that was a good day. And I think that this is the perfect spot to end the first half of a two-parter of our conversation with Alan Peters. So this was such a fantastic episode for us. And again, is meeting passionate designers who love what they do, who are good at what they do, and, and like help people along the way, like who aren't selfish, who are humble, and who just, who are just so fucking cool and human. This is, in my opinion, the epitome of what an amazing designer is. Because again, it's, it's, it's not about the designer. It's about, it's about everybody else. And I think half of these people forget this. They lose sight of this. Alan Peters is somebody who, in, in my opinion, you know, absolutely embodies everything of what a designer should be. So please, if you haven't already, go to Amazon, check out his book, Logos That Last. Again, it's on pre-order. It's going to be launched in October. And you know what? Again, it is not a vanity book. It's not a book all about his logos and his work and how cool he is. I mean, he's giving you all this information in here. He's giving you his whole logo, his whole brand process. And I mean, that alone is worth thousands, if not tens of thousands. I thought I had a solid process. And in talking to him and hearing him go through this and talking to him, you know, off mic, there's so much that now I'm gonna try. So, you know what? Again, this is more than just a vanity book. It's a whole lesson. And I mean, it's on a pre-order. So support, you know, awesome designers like this. And of course, if you haven't already, check out his Instagram. So it's Instagram forward slash Alan Peters. And that's A-L-L-A-N-P-E-T-E-R-S. I kind of made the mistake of going E-N. I kind of felt like a dolt because I sent him something. And he's like, uh, dude, like you misspelled my name. And I'm like, I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. But you know, you get something in your head and just you, you, you just can't shake this. So, um, you know. Please come back for next week for part two. Um, again, it's an amazing second half. If it's possible at all, it might even be better than this half. I mean, we've got more talk about life, more talk about design. Of course, we've got our infamous two minute lightning round where I think we're gonna have some really good laughs on here. And, um, and don't forget this episode is also available on YouTube if you're not watching it on YouTube. So you can actually get a glimpse of some of the logos, what the book looks like. And again, just what the character looks like. He's so animated, he's so cool. He's so down to earth. 
Um, hit us up on Instagram, guys. Hit me up. Say hi. Leave us a note. Please comment. I try to get back to everybody. And if I don't, please forgive me. And I think that's it. I mean, I'm sure I could go on for a lot more, but you guys have already heard enough. So on behalf of Sean, Alan, and myself, stay creative and stay angry. Peace.